Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Kingdom Hearts 358 Days Over 2. Before we start our next mission, our first really real mission, let's go ahead and talk to everybody in the room once again. Don't forget to prep your weapon, says Axel, and actually I forgot since it's been so long since the last episode that I needed to equip this skill gear which will give us a new keyblade, just plop the panel on there and it'll equip the new keyblade for you. That is how new keyblades are equipped and I'll talk about that in just a second, but let's go ahead and talk to Larxene. What are you looking at? Oh, dream on, it's not gonna happen, Pipsqueak. Here, take this and take a hike. Now, I still don't like Larxene, but at least she gave us a potion, but let's go ahead and talk to Marluxia. Your task is clear. Strike down the Heartless and collect hearts. Man, he really doesn't think about anything else except for collecting hearts, which I guess is understandable. You ever get the urge to just do something stupid and awesome? Wait, wait, I'm getting an idea. Uh, nope, it's gone. That pretty much just sums up Dimmicks right there in a nutshell. I didn't like him too much in Kingdom Hearts 2, but he's kind of like the dumb and dumber character of this game, which I kind of like. Anyway, about missions, I think I've pretty much already talked about this. We can select a mission from the list here and get a summary and objectives and rewards that are listed there for each mission. So if we select this mission right here, we get a summary, we get objectives, and of course we get rewards, which I never really look at these too much. I just kind of go with the flow and collect all of them because I'm, it doesn't really matter what the objectives are because they tell you in the mission anyway. I guess it would matter if you didn't want to do certain types of missions. But since I'm going to do all of them, I'm not going to like go through and read all of the objectives. But anyway, of course, here we have a cutscene. Our second mission together. Yep. Sheesh, don't talk my ear off. You ready or what? What? Oh. Oh, yeah. So that was a, a very small cutscene there. Nothing too important. But as you can see down there in the bottom of the bottom screen, we have to defeat Heartless and collect hearts, kind of like Marluxia was just saying. But anyway, if you might, if you remember, speaking of Marluxia, in that mission, he said that Pure Blood Heartless, which include those shadows I just killed, those don't actually drop hearts. So if you want to go for the hearts that you have to complete for missions, which they're going to spawn a couple of Emblem Heartless right here, you have to kill Emblem Heartless to get hearts. The regular Pure Blood Heartless do not drop hearts or, you know, release hearts when they're defeated, which is exactly what Marluxia explained to us in that one mission. And I like the fact, and by the way, I don't think Possessors either are drop hearts either. I think they are also pure blood heartless, so I'm not, yeah, this doesn't look like it is dropping hearts. Yeah, it doesn't. Anyway, in Kingdom Hearts 2, they didn't really talk about the idea of pure blood heartless too much, but I do remember I tried to explain it a little bit, but I think Marluxia explained it a little bit better than I did. Anyway, I'm not sure exactly how many hearts we're going to have to collect, but the way these missions work, it's not necessarily like run around and I'm getting dangerously close to dying right here. That'd be very embarrassing. Just gonna go ahead and use a limit break, I guess. But the way the Heartless spawn is a very set pattern. You don't just run around hoping to run into Emblem Heartless. You get to positions and they will spawn in the same position every time you do the mission. So they will always spawn right there. If you do the mission yourself, you will find them there every single time. The other place you're gonna find them is up here in the station area. They will always spawn up here as well. And I was gonna get that treasure chest, but I guess we're going to get another cutscene right here. But it looks like there's another treasure chest on the other side over there as well that I'm gonna have to collect. But yeah, so they will always spawn in the same place, which I guess I kind of like, but it takes away that element of randomness, I guess, that other games had as far as where enemies spawn. But here we get a new enemy here. We get a Scarlet Tango, which is not necessarily new, because I do believe that they were in Kingdom Hearts 2 as well. And I'm getting, you know, this is proud mode. It actually does get a little bit easier as the game goes on. I'm getting dangerously close to dying every couple of seconds here. After we get in the game a little bit, we're going to get some abilities and keyblades and stuff like that that will make it actually, believe it or not, easier than the early game, in my opinion, anyway. But anyway, speaking of being easy, these guys are not that easy in Kingdom Hearts 2, I thought, anyway. In Kingdom Hearts 2, you might remember that they had that attack where they would constantly hit you off in the air. I specifically, I remember this happening in Beast's Castle. Fortunately, in 358, they are much easier. But anyway, that is actually the final Heartless that we have to defeat, or the final heart that we have to collect. But as you might remember from our mission with Zexion, the organization does not take too lightly to members that only do the bare minimum of what they have to do on their mission. So, 
we're not entirely done yet. We're going to go ahead and go for gold and complete... Actually, it's literally going for gold, I think, if I remember correctly. And I guess we'll see when I complete the mission. If you defeat the secondary objective, I think the bar actually literally turns gold. But anyway, puns aside, or whatever you want to call that, here are more Emblem Heartless that we have to defeat. Fortunately, they just happen to spawn on the way back to the RTC area, the Dark Corridor. So if you weren't really... If you hadn't grasped, the idea of secondary objectives quite yet, I think this is a, a nice way of them to let you know that there are going to be other Heartless you have to defeat to get the secondary objective completed, and here is a bulky vendor. I actually forgot that this was going to be here. Now, it actually does release a heart. I'm not sure if it counts towards your Collect Hearts mission gauge, because the way it works, basically, if you let it disappear, if you don't kill it, it will disappear, and if it counts towards your objective, I think that'd be kind of unfair, because if it disappears, you won't be able to get the heart. I think if you go off screen and come back, it'll be back, but I'm not sure. I should probably go back and, like, watch the footage and see if the heart bar filled up when I defeated it. But, you know, it kind of did turn gold. It's actually a little bit more orange to my eyes, anyway. But let's go ahead and RTC, since we've completed all the objectives and collected all the treasure chests. So, got any plans? I was just going to report to Syx and then go to my room like I always do. Go to your room? Oh, Roxas, Roxas. Who are they? Probably just some kids who live here. Hmm. So does everybody act that way? What do you mean? Like running around chasing each other, making all that noise. Well, yeah. If they have hearts, I suppose that's what they do. Hearts. Come on, let's get some ice cream. Why? Why? Uh, well, cause... Because we're friends. Friends. Friends eat ice cream together and talk and laugh about the stupidest things. Like those kids we just saw. Come on, let's go. Hey, Roxas, after your next mission, let's meet up for ice cream again. No fun just going back and forth between the castle and work, right? Yeah, right. We're friends, huh? And thus begins Roxas's obsession with sea salt ice cream but here we get block like i think that's our first ability i'll be sure to explain that after this cutscene is over actually you know there's not a cutscene here i thought there was going to be a cutscene because there almost always is but anyway let's go ahead and put our panel on our block panel and we just happen to have a spot right here and i'm totally wrong by the way about that being our first ability. I forgot that we got the dodge roll ability. I probably in the last episode, but I forgot when that might have been. Let's go ahead and talk to everybody in this room, though. We're going to get more rewards. Is it true you're almost semi-competent now? Maybe we should have let you in on nothing. Well, I guess Larxene is being Larxene. Zaxxin, on the other hand, your work has been improving by leaps and bounds. Here, I believe you deserve this. And fortunately, Zaxxin actually gives us a panacea. Hopefully, Marluxia will hook us up as well. Number 13, Roxas. Hmm, here, take this. Make use of it as you see fit. And he gives us an Aether, which I think is a little bit better than a Panacea. Maybe Shion will give us something as well. I doubt it. She doesn't even give us words, so I don't know why I thought she would give us any items. But of course, we get a handful of missions here from Syx. I don't remember if I mentioned that or not. This day is going to be absolutely full of missions. Some of them are mandatory, but others are not. I'm just kind of glancing over exactly what he's saying because I think I've explained this already and if not it's easier for me to just explain it myself. Now there are mandatory missions which are symbolized by that keyblade in the top left and if you complete the mandatory missions in a set you can actually advance 
without completing the optional missions, which I guess just makes sense. But here we have three missions. I'm going to go ahead and do the bottom one first because it's probably the easiest and the shortest, and I would like to level up at least one time before we do a different mission, and I will explain why when we get to that mission. But anyway, here we have to survive for one minute. First of all, let me just go ahead and say that it is weird that we are fighting nobodies. Why are we just, you know, murdering our own kind? They are of lesser value than the members of the organization, but they're still nobody, so it seems a little bit weird. On the other hand, go ahead and listen to the music for just a second. Now, it's been a little while since I played Kingdom Hearts 2, but if I'm not mistaken, is that not the music that plays when you, like, fight Pete? I'm not sure why that plays during this fight. It makes almost absolutely no sense to me. But as far as tactics for this go, it's not necessarily that hard. I think a lot of people try and run away from the Heartless, and that turns out, or not the Heartless, the Nobodies, that turns out not to work quite as well as you might expect, because they do die in two or three, four hits. So it turns out to be a little bit easier as I'm about to die here. It turns out to be a little bit easier to just actually take them on in combat than to run away, but that's really all there is to that mission. How's work? Going okay? Yeah, I can't complain. That's good. There was a very short, heartfelt cutscene there, but of course we get a level-up panel here, which I don't know why I said of course, I think that might be our first level-up panel. And it is because I already explained that I wanted to do that mission specifically to get that level-up panel. So I'll just go ahead and explain that here, because I had a hunch there was not going to be a cutscene here, and it was right, so that is good. Now, the way level ups work in this game is you have to equip level up panels to your level to your panel system bar thing here. The way this ends up working out is that there are other panels that you can equip that. And by the way, these guys won't give us anything if we talk to them now. So I'm just going to go ahead and go to the next area or the next mission. But the way it works is there are other panels that if you equip level up panels and link them to those panels, they will eventually give you like double and triple levels so one panel will not necessarily only be one level at a time it's a little bit confusing and i i guess it's not actually that confusing but if you've never played the game before i can kind of see how that might be a little bit confusing when we actually get to that point a little bit later on i will get into that now this is a little bit different than our other objective in the last mission or whatever two missions ago where we had to collect those hearts it's a little bit similar but in this case we don't actually have to defeat anything that is not a watcher so i'm gonna go ahead and defeat pretty much everything just to get the experience that i run into but to actually complete this thing you don't have to you don't have to defeat anything other than the watcher so i'm not sure if i want to show everything on camera like all the intermediate stuff that's one thing I've never really been sure since I started this Let's Play. How exactly I'm going to handle these missions, because as you can see, there is a lot of fluff in between. Like, of course, I'm running in these fairly consistently, but in between there is a lot of, you know, other Heartless that I'm going to have to defeat to get experience and stuff, which in other Kingdom Hearts series I've done, I have not, and I don't think there's going to be any dialogue here, so I'll just talk over this, but there are four here, so I think these are going to be the final ones. In other Kingdom Hearts series, I have typically cut out all the fluff, and not even Kingdom Hearts, and pretty much every other series I've ever done. So let me know how much editing you necessarily want me to do, and I will try and keep that in mind. Ideally, I would like to not do too much editing in this series, because I know a lot of people might not have seen this game, in kind of in comparison to Kingdom Hearts 2, I'm sure a lot of people have seen the, that game. So I want to try and keep pretty much everything in, if possible. Might as well go ahead and use our limit break here. And by the way, I kind of glossed over, but they have an attack where they can put a one-ton weight on you or whatever. That's the symbol that it uses to let you know you've been altered by that status effect. And what that does is it'll not allow you to jump at all. So if that happens, I recommend either using a panacea to get rid of it, or just kind of waiting until it goes away. Now, as far as I know, that is all of the... I mean, not as far as I know, it says down there, that is the final treasure chest we have to collect. And, of course, we have defeated all of the objectives, or we've completed all of the objectives. So, I guess I will see you guys back at the Dark Corridor.
Now, I guess they had nothing to say to each other right there. We don't, it doesn't look like we got anything of note here, so I guess I'll just go ahead and advance to the next day. Already day 17 out of 358, so I'm not sure what percentage that is, but I'm not sure if I mentioned this before or not. We're not actually going to have to do a mission on every single day. When you complete the optional objectives, or the mandatory objectives, I should say, you will go ahead and go to the next set of days, so you'll skip a lot of days in between, and I'll talk about that probably after this mission that we're about to do right here. Now, of course, this mission is an optional mission, and the secondary objective in this optional mission is as optional as you could possibly get, because it is very, very difficult this early on in the game. In fact, if, on, if you're on proud mode and you're on level 1, or at level 1, and you get hit by the enemy that will get you the final hearts you need for the secondary objective completion, you will die in one hit. So, that is why I got that level up back in the first mission, or second mission, I guess, that we did in this episode. I want to give myself a little bit of a buffer between my, you know, life and death, I guess. Now, one thing I probably should have mentioned is that if you use guard, it makes that a little bit easier. Now, guard also makes this easier. I am not making it look that much easier, so I guess I'm just gonna go ahead and use fire and that, or, you know, fire and physical attacks, I should say. But yeah, blocking makes specifically this mission a whole lot easier. Now, if I die right here, that'll be very embarrassing because this is not even supposed to be the hard part in comparison to the next enemy. But it does look like we're gonna be just fine here, and there we go, our primary objective has been completed, and of course, like I've been talking it up, we have one more enemy that we have to defeat that will take care of the rest of that bar. Now, the enemy, of course, I've already talked about how it will kill you in one hit if you're at level one on proud mode. The other part that I wanna talk about is not only is it hard to not take damage, it's kind of hard to actually do damage because we have a relatively weak keyblade early on in the game when our strength is low. But not only that, the Zip Slasher, I'm not sure if I've said his name yet, but the enemy we're going to have to defeat is called the Zip Slasher, and he has really high relative HP. And a lot of it says, caution, a powerful enemy appeared. Or it kind of went away too fast for me to read it. But yeah, it's a, a very high HP enemy this early on in the game, so it's going to take quite a bit of time, assuming I don't die at all, for me to even defeat it the first time, or, you know, in one run. So as you can see, it has like one, two, three. It's actually kind of hard for me to count that. I think it's like eight HP bars, but I guess all that really is left for me to do right now is go ahead and talk about tactics. Now, what I like to do, or what you could do, is allow Marluxia to go in there and attack him all by himself, but that takes absolutely forever, so I'm not going to do that. What I like to do is get like six, seven, eight hits in and then back off because he will do that spinning attack and kind of lunge at you and it is very well telegraphed so you don't have to be that worried about when he's going to do it. So if he does that, you know, the telegraphing of the attack, he's not doing it quite yet. I don't want to attack him right now because I, there we, well, I guess not. Actually, maybe it's not as telegraphed as I thought it was going to be, but when he kind of twists his body a little bit, that is when you've got to be careful and you've got to dodge that, not dodge, block that attack and then go in for more attacks. So it, as you can kind of see, it's not really that hard. It's just kind of a long ride. So I guess I'll meet you guys after this fight is over.
finally, I took care of that stupid zip slasher that took like six or seven minutes. I'm not sure exactly. I guess I'll just look when I'm editing, but that took forever. That is exactly why hollow missions exist. You're not even probably supposed to take that enemy out right now. You can definitely come back later and not make it that hard. And not only did it take forever, there was a point in there where he actually got an attack on me and I thought I was a goner, which would have been terrible because I had already gotten his HP down to like half, I think. Anyway, just to kind of relax a little bit, I guess, we get to go on a small fetch quest here and collect a couple of treasure chests. There are seven on this map right now. I'm actually not even sure if I remember where they all are. Hopefully I do because that's not a big deal, you know, collecting treasure chests, especially after I defeated that. And by the way, this is probably something I should talk about as well. If your backpack is full and you try and open a treasure chest, you will not get the item that is inside the treasure chest. I guess that just kind of makes sense. But the problem with that is if you don't actually get whatever is inside the treasure chest, you don't get credit for opening that treasure chest or collecting whatever was in it. So if you're trying to go for every single treasure chest in the game, I recommend clearing out a little bit of space in your backpack so you can open up every single treasure chest. And later on, they're actually going to be panels that expand our backpack space, but of course here we're going to get a cutscene. Now there's Axel and Roxas just kind of enjoying each other's company again. I guess there's not really too much for them to talk about at this point. And of course we don't really get anything of note there in that mission review but of course as you can see a couple of days pass instead of just one i guess it was like four or five that's what's going to happen every time you advance the date after you complete your mandatory objectives anyway that was a, a fairly action-packed episode if i do say so myself so what i think i'm gonna do is go ahead and end the episode here because we have a new set of objectives we can probably worry about in the next episode so i want to thank you guys for watching this episode of let's play kingdom hearts 358 days over two and i hope to see you guys back for the next episode